one quadrillion dollars. <laughs> yes, that's a real number. I did not make it up. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what that number means to you and what you should be doing because of it. All right, so let's get started. This is the Hey Ed YouTube channel, and I am your host, moderator, and all-around nice guy, Edward Anderson. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Don't construe anything that I mentioned in this video as financial advice. Always do your own research before doing anything with your money. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep this video short and pithy, because uh, it's just I want you to understand um, what the message I'm trying to give to you is, but context is important, and I'm going to give you just enough facts and figures to have everything make sense to you, okay? Okay, so to get proper context, we need to harken back a little ways. Let's think back to the spring of 2020, okay? A little over uh, two years ago, right? On that day, on March 9th, okay, the market had an almost 10% sell-off in one day, and it erased almost $2 trillion worth of market value, okay? And the very next day, the Federal Reserve started quietly and secretly issuing all sorts of emergency loans to banks and financial institutions that they deemed too big to fail, whereas in, where if they failed, it would upset the financial system. So they initially started out by issuing $112 billion in emergency loans uh, to banks and financial institutions. And then just a couple of weeks later, they issued another $1 trillion, yes, with a T, one trillion dollars in a six day period to banks and financial institutions that they deemed too big to fail, right? Now, and they weren't just American banks and institutions. A lot of these were foreign banks and institutions as well. Now, because of the Dodd-Frank bill, which is one of the most evil laws to be passed by, by our corrupt politicians, that law uh, said that the Federal Reserve did not have to report this kind of activity for two years. The theory being that if they announced what they were doing, that it would create panic uh, in, in the financial world and there would be runs on the banks. And they're right, right? Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, they want to keep you in the dark. This is our government looking out for us, right? They, they don't want you to know the truth. They don't want you to know what's going on because they know much better what's good for you than you do. Okay, so let's fast forward now to today. There are two banks right now that are kind of the focus uh, on, in the financial industry, uh, Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank. Now, Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank stocks have been just plummeting for quite a while now. These banks are in serious financial trouble, and these are some of the largest banking institutions in the world. Okay, so year-to-date, Credit Suisse is down 60% year-to-date already. And this bank is in serious trouble. Deutsche Bank isn't doing much better. Deutsche Bank is down 42% year to date. Again, one of the largest banks in the world. Now, Credit Suisse has about $1.5 trillion under management, you know, people, you know assets that, that they control, where, where Deutsche Bank has about $1.3 trillion in assets under management. So between the two banks, they have $2.8 trillion in assets under management. Now, keep that number in your head because we're going to be talking about that in a, in a minute. Okay, so for those of you who remember uh, the big financial crisis of 2008 and 2009, the big culprit there were what's known as CDOs or CDSs, uh, credit default swaps, right? Now, I'm not going to explain credit default swaps in detail here because I'm trying to keep this video short. I mean, basically, uh, credit default swaps are little insurance policies in the event that there is a default, right? That's what they're there for. The problem going into the 2008, 2009, people would buy a policy on a policy, on a policy, on a policy. A great explanation of this is in the movie, um, The Big Short. So you might want to take some time out to watch The Big Short. And so we thought that everyone had to learn their lesson, all right, that this would never happen again, right? So after 2008, 2009, guess what? Credit default levels started to go up again, okay? First, it got to $100 billion. And everyone was saying, gee, $100 billion, are you kidding me? Okay, and then within a year after that, that level got up to over $500 billion. That's the amount of derivatives that were out there worldwide. Well, guess where that number is now? One 
quadrillion dollars. <laughs> one, quad, one quadrillion, okay? Yes, it's a real number. To give you an idea, uh, to kind of visualize what one quadrillion is, let me show you um, a picture that I found. Okay, what you might want to do is go to YouTube and do a search for quadrillion. And there's this little video. I just took a screenshot of it here. But th this kind of paints a picture for you here. These towers here are stacks of $100 bills, right? <laughs> and you see, the total world debt right now is $281 trillion. Okay, if you stacked all these $100 bills up uh, in multiple piles, um, it'd be higher than the Khalifa, what's the name of the tallest building in, in the world in Dubai? Okay, the Khalifa, whatever it is, the, Bur the Burj Khalifa, or whatever it's called. Okay, the total number of world debt is less than one quadrillion. <laughs> now, to paint a little picture for you, uh, last year, there was a big hedge fund that went out of business. And there were $10 billion in defaults, and it was a really big deal. And the Federal Reserve stepped in and they issued emergency loans for $10 billion, and half of that went to Credit Suisse, right? So Credit Suisse was really exposed to the derivatives market. Now, all of these derivatives, they're basically a bet on interest rates and on the economy. So if they're a little bit wrong, uh, we're going to see large banks and financial institutions go out of business real fast. And to put an exclamation mark on it, Deutsche Bank's exposure to the derivatives market is $47 trillion. Now, remember, Deutsche Bank has $1.3 trillion under management. We've got all the assets under management, $1.3 trillion. And yet they have a $47 trillion exposure to these derivatives. Let's take a look at a chart of the derivatives market and see this big spike up here just before March of 2020 when the Fed came in and bailed them out and it settled down for a while. But now look what's happening. Okay, right now, the derivatives market, it, this is an aggregate, right? It is at the same level that it was at just before the big market crash. So we are on very thin ice financially. It will not take very much for one of these major banks to go bust. And that could happen any day. But as soon as we get that first brand name bank that, that announces overnight you know, that they're insolvent, that they, they have to close their doors, you're going to see a ripple effect go throughout, go throughout the financial industry. All right, And there is going to create what we call the contagion effect, right? Now, what is the possible solution to this kind of scenario where banks start going out of business, big banks? Well, it's the same solution that they've always, they're gonna, they're gonna bail them out. They're gonna print more money. Now, when you're printing, now every time you print more dollars or any kind of currency, it creates more inflation, all right? So these people have not learned their lesson. They never will learn their lesson. You know, modern monetary theory, is all about printing your way out of trouble. Just turn on that printing press and spit it out and all your problems will be solved. Forget the fact that it destroys the buying power of your currency. So we're going to see inflation continue in a very dramatic way. It's going to get, it's going to get out of hand. The Federal Reserve and all the other central banks around the world, they have lost control. All right? This is such a big monster right now that it is taking over. It's like the machines taking over, you know, and the Terminator, right? They, they take on a life of their own and it's, there's nothing else you can do about it. The only thing you can do is maybe turn off the machine. And what's the financial industry equivalent of turning off the machine? It's getting rid of your currency and going to that central bank digital currency, right? But the main takeaway I want you to take from this is that the financial industry is in very dire straits. One wrong day here, and things are going to unravel quickly. So what can you do about this? Well, my three-pronged approach, right? Number one, reduce your exposure to your bank. Get your money out of the bank. Maybe not all of it. You know, Keep a couple of months worth of bill paying in the bank. Other than that, get the rest of your money out of your bank. Step number two is when you have your money out of the bank, you're still sitting on a depreciating asset. So take at least some of that money, if not most of it, and get it into gold and silver. All you're doing is transferring your money from a really bad asset class, you know, your currencies, your fiat currencies, uh, into a good asset class, you know, uh, gold and silver. You have to do it. This is part of the preparation, okay? And number three is you have to develop streams of passive recurring income.
Now here at the HEAD group, I've got a really nice group of people um, where we are meeting these challenges head on. Now I can't help you with the first issue, you know, reducing your exposure to your bank, that's on you. But for the second two uh, steps, you know, getting some of your money into gold and silver, I've got a really good program for that. And for your passive income, I've got a couple of really good programs for that. And so I really hope you decide to join the Hey Ed community and shoot me an email and we can talk on the phone or we can do a Zoom call or I can invite you to one of the many Zoom calls that we do inside of the group. Please don't ignore the message I'm giving you, okay? I think that we are in a moment in history and it's not going to be a fun moment and you have to be proactive. Don't wait until the last minute. So if you don't mind, could you hit the like button? It doesn't cost you anything. And maybe even leave a comment. And if you have any messages you can share with me about experiences you're having with your own banks, uh, please uh, include them in the comments below. Ed Anderson signing out. Copy that. Copy that.